What's up YouTube, I'm Vaughn and this is the Gear Channel where we discuss collectibles, hobbies, cabaret games from tabletop to video games and today we are reviewing my Cherubim Mon or Kirby Mon where I like to call him that actually got us third place on Saturday's Digimon tournament now I was very surprised because that was my third tournament that I have ever done which means next week we're going to get fourth place Nah, I'm kidding. I'm going to try and not to get first place because the only loss that we got was from the first round because I built this deck like 10 minutes right before the tournament and reading is very important which I did not really do so I definitely misplayed a lot to the point that my opponent was laughing at me so now I'm actually a lot more familiar with it and also on the other rounds of the tournament I actually realized how good this deck is and realize the potential that it definitely has there's definitely a few things i would change in the deck but besides that i actually really do like the deck now before we begin for any reminder to definitely like and subscribe and especially subscribe if you guys want to enter in our amazing giveaways so starting with the dg eggs we have our four upamon so definitely I do like Upamon, but one thing that I am playing as the fifth, which is more for a grind game, which doesn't really happen because this deck is very fast paced, is a Cupimon. And honestly, I do prefer Cupimon more, so I might actually change the rotation, maybe play even three Cupimons or four and one Upamon. Because when I said that the deck is very fast paced, the ability to draw one if you have five security or more is much more likely to happen than the Upa when you have three. Because it's going to be a longer process for you to have three security. So definitely I've been seeing that Cupimon kind of fits a bit more for this specific deck. Next for the rookies we do have for Bushi Agumon. So Bushi Agumon definitely is an amazing card and honestly I kind of wish there was more uh, rookies with uh, Rush especially Yellow that would have been perfect. Next we do have our two Salomon which honestly I'm going to be looking at a few more options to actually see what we can do for replacing like I said uh, the deletion, it's not bad. It's just, I think it's a bit too slow paced for this deck. But um, definitely going to be looking into some other alternatives for Salomon. And for our last rookie that we have is for Bokomon. Now I know a lot of the higher tier decks are only playing about two or three, not really four that we see. But with Charabimon, you could really spam Bokumon and also filling up the board with these. And as soon as you just do one hybrid evolution, you're already filling up on a lot of memories. So usually every time I do my hybrids, I always had at least two anyway. So we're gaining four memories. So you definitely want to max out on this for this deck because it's very fast when it comes with the rookies. Next, we're going over with our hybrid. So we have four Lorimon, which is definitely needed, especially for the evolution, because the hybrid choice is definitely a lot faster. And the Eismon, I don't find really work that well with this uh, deck. I know it's fast pace for the draw, but you need more fast pace of the Digivolutions than anything else. Next, we have four Kaiser Leomon, which is amazing. Love this card. Sometimes I'll even just play for one memory just so I could draw that extra card because you do have a lot of free memory in this deck. Now, for our only level five Digimon that we have is actually Raihimon, which honestly, this is very debatable. I know it might be wrong that only playing four. Four, but I do find the deck really thins, thins out really fast and you get to a lot of your key cards very fast so I don't see a reason to play more than four of him and finally for Kirpimon 
or for the newer players to call it Cherubimon. Now definitely an amazing card. This is the key card of the deck. I would not really recommend to play uh, four because you do attempt to brick with it and there's definitely a lot of ways to recycle it from uh, the trash so I don't see it being too necessary to play it at four. Three I think is just perfect. Now we're going to go with the options. Now the ratio of the deck when it comes of how many Digimons I'm playing, how many options I'm playing, and how many Tamers I'm playing, I think the ratio is actually like on point and I've seen that it has a lot of consistency to the point that I don't even have to mulligan in most of my games. So it's rare, it's very consistent. But the only issue is that maybe there is a few options that I might have to take out to play more copies of another specific option. Same thing with the Tamers. With the Digimon part, I am very happy with. I just told you the only thing I might change is the Salomon for another rookie level 3 yellow Digimon but we'll see so for the option we have only one demonic disaster which I am definitely planning of uh, putting more in so I might actually take out a few of the other options instead but this actually won me many games so definitely is a amazing card next we have this card that I won't even attempt to pronounce but so it's a good card I don't really like I don't really like to play more of it. I feel like one or even zero. I'm actually at the point of not playing it. Yes, I'm not saying it's not a bad card. It just, it doesn't really synergize with a lot of the strategy in a deck. And just having it in hand, yes, potential to blow up your board. But I'd rather have more cards to support towards Truebeamon so it doesn't become any dead draws or more of a line of being ran randomized for like actually just popping your opponent's Digimon if we already have a card that does it. So I'd rather have options that were focused more around the Cherubimon plays instead. So that's probably the only reason why I don't like it so much. But it is still a good card. Then we have two Dark Claws, which honestly is the one I was debating of switching out and why I would probably switch it with another Demonic Disaster. And for our last purple option we have is Calling for Darkness. Now, maybe I would actually put in a third one, so I would take out a Death Claw for maybe a third one. And put one demonic disaster or actually replace both deck claws for two demonic disasters. That could also be a option to do. But for the count of the options that we're playing with, I think is on key. And now for yellow options that we have is actually Blinding Ray, which is an amazing card i think everyone should be playing this if you have a yellow package as your digi eggs i think this is a mandatory card you trust a card from your security stack and you gain two memories for free now yes it doesn't have a security effect so if it's in your stack and it gets trashed nothing happens but at least it's actually main ability is quite good and it could definitely stack up pretty high so now for our tamers, we do have Mimi, which I am planning of playing a second one. We also have one Matt Ishida. Now this one, I am also playing a second one and I'm going to be showing you shortly what we're going to be planning of taking out as tamers to replace for one more of each. So after that, we do have our amazing Analog Youth, which is an amazing card and I think three is perfect for this deck. Consistency wise, it's good. You get to thin out your deck. You also gain memory if your Cherubini gets destroyed. So there's actually a lot of cool combos with it and this showed a lot of value. Next we have four carries, which is actually the one that I am planning of switching out. So I do want to take two carries out for one mat and for one Mimi. 
So I'm okay with just playing two carries uh, in a deck. Uh, it's decent. It's not a necessity to have. Uh, I like to focus more on the tamers that actually cost only twos because there's a lot of plays that you could do when your gauge is at two instead of at three. So definitely, if they even had a bad purple tamer that was memory cost one, I would definitely play that in a heartbeat. Next, we do have Kochi. Because obviously you get the extra ability as well. And it does deck thinning as well with a security ability that lets you play it. So definitely is a very good card. And finally for our last tamer that we have is another Matt Ishida. Which is honestly probably the best tamer to actually use for this deck. Now I know a lot of you guys might actually disagree with this. But the reason why is because, yes, we're deleting our own Digimon, so we do gain the memory as well. But the most important thing is that the play cost is only 2. So there's actually a lot of plays that you could do with it. That makes it very simple for you to actually go off to make uh, Cherubimon as fast as possible. So I actually really like this card a lot. This, I will always keep it at 4 for this deck. I think it's needed. I've seen a lot of people not playing it. But maybe it's because they don't see the potential of how much memory you can actually gain with just this card. Especially if you have them stacked. And it's very easy to stack them, especially with memory cost of 2. And that's it for a Cherubimon deck. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. And especially subscribe if you guys want to enter in our amazing giveaways. And if you want a sneak peek of future products we're planning to review here on the channel, you can follow me on my Instagram, Vaughn Gear. I'm Vaughn, and this was the Gear Channel.